In this video, we look back at some of the most brutal knockouts in boxing history. Even though he's still down, well, I'm just saying you're going to be all right, pal, but uh, I don't know whether he'd agree with that. Let's get straight to it. Bruno fought American Chuck Gardner, and it was a performance that made everyone sit up and take notice. He really does look ancient. Even what hair there is is gray. And a lot of that 17 stone four you can see for yourself is flab. And there's the first punch from Bruno. Not a heavy one, but Gardner felt it. Bruno hunted Gardner down from the start. That's a good punch. And that looks to me as though we may not see any more of Chuck Gardner of Minneapolis tonight. One punch, that's all it took, and he's out, and good enough. Fainting the jab and landing a left hook that sent everyone home early. At a nightmare journey, he clearly is underfit, and it only took one not terribly lethal-looking punch from Bruno to put him away, and he's still stricken. And so all the suggestions that this was not a good match, I'm afraid, have been proved right. The man had no chance. He shouldn't have been in the ring. But you don't want fights like that. It's done Bruno no good, and it's certainly done Chuck Gardner no good, and it's a relief to see that he's regained consciousness. You're going to be all right, pal. Even though he's still down. Well, I'm just saying you're going to be all right, pal, but uh, I don't know whether he'd agree with that. Okay, let's get him up. Well, it's a pathetic sight in this festival hall in Cannes. Gardner, who had only arrived two days before the fight, didn't look in great shape. It's refreshing to hear such honesty from the commentator, something you don't hear often these days. It looked like a jab. In fact, it was a left hook, just hooked, and it was all he needed to pitch full on his face and out to the world. And we have to hope that uh, the opposition will be rather more resilient than that. Pierre Coetzer was known as a durable slug. Knows what he wants to do. He was the kind of guy who had no problem banging with you. Basically a human wrecking ball. He came out fast, but look at how comfortable Bo is while he's under attack. Left hook just missed for Bo. Now the right hand lands. And again, two right hands by Bo. Bo looked like he was having a leisurely Sunday stroll while Kotzer was trying to start a fight at a family picnic. The major difference between these two fighters is that Bo had much better head movement. It's like comparing a nimble ballerina to a bull in a china shop. The fight mainly consisted of Kutzer taking bombs and giving his own back. One criticism of Bo is that he was far too happy to operate on the inside. It meant he was a formidable opponent, but also took a lot of punishment. Bo's excellent jab started working like magic, and he landed a brutal combination that really hurt Kutzer. Kutzer had the heart, but against Bo, he was like a lamb to the slaughter. Kutzer in serious trouble. Camille's lane one punch away from stopping it, and there it is. I guess Mike Snow's is bleeding a little bit. Maybe what it is. Left back. Tate goes down in his face. Weaver hit him with a left hook, and Tate is down. Oh, he is just beginning to move. The fight is over. Weaver has knocked him out in the 15th round. With less than a minute to go in the 15th round. Bang to the body, there's the left hook, it hit him right on the button, and he went right down on his face, and he went out. He really didn't move until he was counted out at 2.15 of the 15th round. Well, how do you do? Stunning. In the 15th, he ended it. There's the right to the body. Here's the left hook that ended it. Pow! Right there. Mike Weaver is the new WBA heavyweight champion. Ah oui! Et il ne fait pas qu'encaisser une remise. Attention, il encaisse encore! Ah mais cette percut était de trop pour Eddie. Eddie Hall was brave, but facing Jackson's punches was like trying to block a freight train with a toothpick. Jackson's uppercuts were so brutal, it was like watching a demolition derby in slow motion. 
avec un upercut de droit qui a déséquilibré Eddie Hall et il essaye d'enchaîner Julian Jackson. Bien à l'intérieur, il a compris qu'en crochet c'était compliqué car Hall a très souvent les mains hautes. Et pourtant, et le oui. crochet gauche est passé. Allez, allez, allez. Hall put up a game effort, but Jackson's power was just off the charts. And second in his mind is the fact it's revenge. Oh, what a combination, a left to the body and a chopping right hand. Senegal trying to collect himself. The count is six. The count is eight. Senegal has collected himself. Smart work, but a lot of time left in this fight. This is going to end in the first round. Senegal is hurt. McGirt all over him and down he goes. It's all over. Sam, there's no junior welterweight in the world outside of the top 10 who can go very long with this guy. David, to uh, look like he was on his way to losing a decision against Puerto Rican, Frez O'Kendall. Until round nine happened, that's when Tua decided it was time to clock in and do what he does best, throw those terrifying hooks. And there's an overhand right, a left hook to the neck. Tua beginning to score, opening up. It hurt O'Kendo to his legs, came out a little bit of under. Jumping on Frez O'Kendo, who holds on for dear life. Frez was in serious trouble, dodging some shots like his life depended on it. But a few got through, and let's be real, you can't afford to take any clean punches from Tua. That last right hand had Frez looking like a deer on an ice rink and honestly, the stoppage was probably the best thing that could have happened. If it hadn't been stopped, Frez might have been launched straight into the front row. He's not throwing back right now, and the referee's right on it. The referee looks in, comes close, still watching, still watching. There's one big shot that comes through here, right here. That's the one the referee said, so I've seen enough of that. In the end, literally the end, Tua delivered exactly what everyone was waiting for. He gave Okendo a whole new perspective on life doing coming into this round I think I was behind but um I believe and I had a lot of faith that uh, it was only a matter of time I uh, I came out faster in uh, the first round and established that hook just to keep him honest and let him know there was a matter of time but I can't take nothing away from Mr. Quindle Un petit peu raide. Crochet gauche. Le premier crochet gauche. Voilà, ça c'est bien. Voilà, il faut... Norbert et Cassie essayent de, de contenir l'assaut. Ils voient qu'il a Gurov qui tient le choc.
Chavez defended his title against Ann, and his straight right hand was on point. Stunned more than hurt on. There you see it again. Once Chavez had his man hurt, he was a devastating finisher, like a chef perfecting a recipe. Unless it was a harder punch than he's ever been hit before. He told us he had never been down before. He's about to go down again. Chavez landing with lefts and rights. And on searches out a place to fall down. Now he looks to his corner for guidance. Six. Well, he landed it right on the point of the chin. And here's knockdown number two. Was you're the... going to see on searching out some canvas. Between rounds in Chavez's corner, he was being told to move side to side, not stray right in front of on because on could still be dangerous. Uh, quite as vigorously as was the case in the final minute of round two. And you have to believe that the body punches are taking their toll. And down he goes. And half the crowd has gotten excited over some kind of ruckus Six. that's happening behind us. Jim, that's what you were hearing. Okay. Before that knockdown, huh? Come on. Han cannot go That's on, it. and he retires. Or as we say in America, he quit. And tried his best, but he was outclassed and decided to quit before he ended up more battered. Prompted by the third knockdown of the bout. The trademark left hook to the body, a combination before the count of ten. There it is, digging the hook to the body, and you can see on putting his right arm down to try to protect himself there. Julio, congratulations. Was he a little tougher than you thought? Si era más peligroso que pensabas. Realmente yo no pensé que fuera tan a resultar la pelea tan tan fácil, la verdad. Lo único que puedo decir es que me sentí muy fuerte. He said he wasn't as tough a fight as he thought. I mean, it was an easier fight than he thought it was, and uh, he felt really good. He felt very strong for this. And you see Wingfield. Warning again for the holding, which Emery has done since the first round. Marksdale, another right. Body shot. Great right. Down goes Emery. He was down before he hit the canvas, Larry. Impressive performance by George Marksdale. Will Emery get up? This fight is over. I should have said he was out before he hit the canvas. Very impressive second round knockout by George Barksdale. What a great game plan he had going to the body first and then to the head the second round. Could have drawn it up any better. The combination punching of George Barksdale, his power too much, his speed, Kevin Emery never in this fight. I thought that Bo Jack was tired in the sixth round against the former lightweight king, Ike Williams. of the two fighters. Sharp, jolting punches by Ike Williams. Williams pouring it on, a barrage of punches. I think Williams looked great in this fight. Notice the speed of Williams' punches. Williams pouring it on, jolting punches, ripping combinations. The referee is useless here, absolute trash. He clearly let Jack take too many punches. In and wars Ike Williams. Williams ripping punches on Bo Jack. Bo staggers backward into the corner. This really is one of the most vicious finishes in boxing history. Dynamite punches by Ike Williams. Rapid fire left and right. And finally, Williams appeals to the referee to stop the fight. He thinks that Bo Jack is helpless. I have to give Jack credit for ending the fight in a vertical position. If you haven't watched much of Williams, or really should, he is certainly one of the very best lightweights of all time. The referee doesn't heed Williams. Ike pours it on once again, and finally the referee steps in. It's all over. Ike Williams wins a hard-fought sixth-round KO victory over the courageous Bo Jack. Williams, considered by many to be one of the greatest lightweight champions of all time, along with Joe Gans, Benny Leonard, Barney Ross, and Henry Armstrong. Come on, Retro Sunshine! The question is, can Radliff survive the bout? As you see, we're down to 25 seconds, and that's it. Beautiful right hand, time perfectly. Pink 
Leon Thomas stopping. Alfonso Radler caught, was able to land. And Radler chased by Thomas. Referee Cappuccino steps in. Thomas now 21 and 0 with 18 by knockout Alfonso Ratliff, who was able to rally and hold on, suffers his second defeat. David Gonzalez was one of those fighters in the 1990s who always made sure fans got their money's worth. He was game, tough, and brought the action every time he stepped into the ring. Lou's son doing a fine job with Gonzalez, and of course that Tampa connection was resurrected through promoter Phil Alessi, and uh, they've had Gonzalez here a few times, very popular here in Tampa, though. Getting less popular round by round, although it's no fault of his own, Jeff. Rondon coming forward a little bit more strongly in round six as he's thrown a couple of combinations. David Gonzalez is a very good defensive fighter and very patient on his attack. He's been trying to press the pace in this fight. Unable to do so. Rondon goes down finally. A short chopping shot. Didn't really see where it was the type of stuff that would bring a fighter to his knees, but as we said several times, David Gonzalez, the accumulation of blows, he may have broken the ribs of Juan Rondon, and I think Rondon's going to wave this thing off. That left hook to the body was a beauty. Textbook stuff. He had put on such a beating throughout the fight that the referee stopped it there, probably thinking, all right, David, save some of that for the next guy. Into the body by Gonzalez. He will dig with the left hook. And as you can see, that's what uh, sent Rondon to the canvas. Now, Rondon may have been complaining about a rib injury before this. We don't know that at this point in time. And uh, you get a right hand in here, and uh, it was an effective blow for you. When you come upstairs, it surprises a lot of people because they have to be very wary of the body. Right, that, that's what opens up a lot of the head shots whenever I throw that. See, throw that left hook to the body. And see, that, that has everybody looking for the body shot. So when I go up top, you know, I usually can catch them pretty good. In his first world title fight, Hamid destroyed the champion Steve Robinson in his own hometown. Robinson for only the second time in his career. I thought Robinson was completely outclassed. He had tons of heart, but Hamid was just too agile for him. Really very, very confident. Look, the punches come from all sorts of angles. Bringing them round the side, one right through the middle there, and then lifts that one up. Right hand, right up the middle. And down he goes. In the last couple of rounds, maybe. And that's, that's just a slip. Now he slipped. And I think the referee stopped it. He stopped the fight. The final left hook was a beautiful shot, and Robinson's legs went on strike. At that point, the fight had to be stopped. Hamid was now a world champion, with his sights set on becoming the unified champ and the recognized number one featherweight in the world. Oh, right. Didn't he? Yeah, yeah. It was a sort of delayed action for... Naturalmente questo non significa che giustamente non debba intervenire Poletti a richiamarlo. C'è di tanto in tanto qualche... Oh, un destro! Un destro preciso. Ha messo nuovamente al tappeto Giorgetti che si era segnalato con un terribile destro. Un match di terribile intensità ancora il destro. È finita, è finita, è finita. Quel destro avevamo già preannunciato, aveva prodotto forse danni irreparabili. Juan Kaji made a big mistake by squaring up in front of Gonzalez, and he paid the price for it. He got dropped hard by that right hand. It's going to be a wild one, I think. There was that right hand, the same wild right hand that he threw. Oh, down goes Kaji! Oh, five! Kaji's not got his feet under him, Steve. He's looking to his corner for a little advice, but he's not out as badly as he was last time. No, but he's not, he's not ready. He's, he's been rocked. He has been rocked. He's right for a knockout. He's got 50 seconds to survive round one. This was a rematch of their first fight, which had more controversy than a reality TV reunion. Gonzalez had Koji seriously hurt, and honestly, the referee and officials pulled some shady moves to keep up Koji in the fight. In the end, Koji somehow won that first fight by knockout, but he was in serious trouble here, barely managing to survive the round. Obviously, at least psychologically, extremely upset and angry, and he might be just going on sheer adrenaline here. He's that big right hand, and that's, that's going to be key for this fight. Well, that went through seven time zones alone to get there. That's a long right hand. And a butt, and a butt. Wild 
first round. All right, here's a knockdown, and here's a, that long, long right hand that got him in trouble in the first fight. There it is again, right on the button. In the corner, they're saying, don't stand straight, straight up. You're standing straight up. Walk to his right. Walk to his right. And Koji's saying, I'm all right. I, I feel all right. He just caught me. Now, we'll see the headbutt right before the end of the round. They kind of just ran into each other. Bang, right in the mouth. Not a bad area for either fighter. Top of the head for one, mouth for the other. Not something that should be a factor. Then came the third round, and things got even crazier. There it is, a lot of blood over the left eye now of Juan Koji, the champion. That was that right hand that he countered with, and it pinched his eye. Sometimes you pinch the eyelid against your bone. Boom, it busted open. Now, we said if one of them is going to get cut, it's going to be Koji, the way they're button heads and the way he's getting hit by a right hand. And Koji with a real sense oh, of, oh, he got out. Trouble. And Gonzalez was hurt with that left uppercut. Staggering, couldn't get his feet under him, and Koji hesitated for a second. And here again, you got that holding and hitting. Uh, interesting tactic. And Koji going in. For a finish here. Oh, big left hand and here comes Gonzalez. Koji landed a sweet left uppercut on the inside. He followed up with another left hand that dropped Gonzalez like a bad habit. Because Gonzalez is on Queer Street. He doesn't really know where he's at. No. He's getting hit. He's just winding up now, Koji, and going for the kill. He stayed on him like a dog with a bone and got the stoppage. Keep your hand on, on the right hand. That's right on the eye, no question about it. Yep, no question about it. But right eye, pinched his, pinched his skin right up against the eye bone, and that's what caused it. It was a good right hand. It was the first punch he threw of the round. But like I said, if he could have lasted, that cut was looking very bad. Yeah, there was no butt there at all. He was anywhere close to being butted. That was the pure right hand punch. No, it was a right hand. Let's take a look at that first knockdown, which came because of, a, of the a sharp exchange underneath. Uh, he, he got in trouble. Check out how nice and crisp Koji's punches are, especially that right hook. Sharp enough to slice bread. Yeah. They backed him up, but yeah. he yeah. followed through with that rising left hand as well. I mean, it, and it, it, it was the uppercuts that started all this, and he was not able to clear his head. Could be just, he just doesn't have a great chin to recuperate the powers, or it could be a combination of that, that jet lag in a terrible time zone. Uh, here's the second one. By this time, Koji knows all he's got to do is press. He's fresh. The other guy's completely worn out and not even conscious. He's just standing there. All of this could have been avoided. He's and out. a mark of inexperience, Gonzalez tries to fight back while he's hurt. He should just hold on. Hold on. Take a walk. Make the referee break him. Move. Hold on some more. Don't try and fight back out of pride or any other reason. Something that took me a long time to learn. I, I, I don't think he, he was even conscious during all of that time. I think he was out on his feet and he just couldn't do anything but accept the punches. And Koji, hey, is an experienced and very good champion. We in here from Ken. Good left. Oh, tremendous left hand from Charlie Three. Kane. Oh. Now it's Roach's oh. turn to go down. What about that? And that's from the, the non-puncher, really, of the two. Beautiful straight left hand. And just have a look here at this punch that Kane produces. It's an absolute peach. I wonder if Derek Roach used uh, Eileen Drury. There's another right hand, though, going in from Roach. And this time, Kane is in serious trouble. Stretched out. He gets up at eight, but he looks very tight. And he stopped. He's not ready to go on, says Roy Francis. And it is over in the seventh round. See him arguing. Now, there's no argument about that. There's the right hand that finished the argument. And that was a, a good one. Again, when he needed it, he found the accuracy. Not much throughout the fight, but when he did land, there were good punches. And that proved to be a, a very good one, right on the button. And Roach went down quite heavily. Once again, Charlie Kane comes a cropper at British Championship level. Liston's fight against Roy Harris was another explosive showing. Liston advances menacingly, putting tremendous pressure on his opponent. After taking a short time to figure out his range, Liston went to work. 
Sonny floors Harris with a smashing left hook. Harris is up at the count of nine, but he's in real trouble. It's rare that fighters can land lead left hooks that opponents don't see coming. A final lead right hand ended the fight in the first round once again. Devastating right to the head, which floors Harris for the fourth time. While Roy is on the canvas, a referee moves in and called a halt to the fight. Harris's reaction was probably something like, did I just get hit by a meteor? Liston is definitely the number one ranking challenger in the heavyweight division. Jimmy Thunder might have had a few rough edges, but one thing he definitely wasn't lacking was knockout power. In his fight against J.B. Williamson, there came a point where Thunder just decided to start swinging for the fences. Oh, good punches by Thunder. He got up about three there in a row. Williamson uh, looking for somewhere to hide at the moment. Thunder's hitting him with everything now. This is what the uh, Jimmy Thunder corner would be looking for. He's hitting with some big punches. They certainly haven't got the power of earlier on, but he's bombing him. Jimmy Thunder trying to put J.B. Williamson away. Williamson fights back gamely. He landed a right hand that sent Williamson to the canvas. Experience is something you cannot buy. He's down. Replay will say that it was a punch, a left from Thunder, I think, that found the mark. And he goes after Williamson now. Thunder really finishing strongly with the latter stages of the final round. Big bombs from Thunder. Williamson's over the ropes. Street trying to stop it. He has stopped it. The replay shows those follow-up shots while Williamson was strapped on the ropes were downright savage. The ref had no choice but to step in because, let's be real, Williamson was starting to look like a baby antelope trying to walk for the first time after that beating. Eventually he got between them and uh, he declared the fight over. No more for J.B. Williamson today as he took that last barrage of punches by Jimmy Thunder. It took Jimmy a long time to get there, but eventually he got there, knocking Williamson down in the 10th and then finishing it off as you saw. In this Bruno fight, the mismatch was so clear, it was like bringing a tank to a pillow fight. And Shark is only 13-11 and just under 6 feet. And he's complaining that Bruno hit him on the back of the head, which is not a very good start for an experienced pro like Shark. That was 1977 he went in with Weaver. Bruno outweighed Bill Sharkley by 25 pounds, and it showed. Six years ago. And over goes Sharkey. Fairly predictably, I would have thought. Flat on his face, and almost certainly flat out. Yes, he is. All over. Two minutes and ten seconds on my watch. And... Sharkey was hanging all over him, and up comes the right. That's precisely how you put Jameson away in Chicago. But there's no doubt at all that Bruno is a sensational young prospect, and Britain is lucky to have him. 